Okay, let's go to the next uh, part of this uh, topic. First of all, you should open your Hecrest and create a project. As I mentioned in the uh, first uh, part of this course, you should go to the file menu and select new project and in the desired or your uh, selected location I will go to desktop paper and in this part uh, I will create a new folder heck model and the title is flood inundation mapping or other name uh, let me to delete this word and select OK. Okay, uh, I want to import a UTM then which is in metric system and therefore you should use SI unit for your project. If you uh, use uh, US customary or footy or inch or other uh, dimension you should select your suitable dimension and coordinate system. Okay, uh, in this uh, section, uh, we want uh, to use uh, Hecrest for extraction of uh, cross section. We want, uh, we don't want to use uh, GIS or HexGeoRAS extension for this issue because you know uh, Hecrest in new in newer versions uh, provide an environment with the name of GIS tools, and in this environment, you can. Uh, use uh, the tools uh, that help uh, that help you to create river banks, uh, cross section structure, and other related information for a river. Okay. Uh, however, in GIS environment, you can use Hexorance, and using this extension, you can uh, create a stem center line bank line, flow pass, cut line, bridge, and other information uh, related to, the, to a real river. Okay, uh, we don't want to use this extension. However, if we don't have enough time, I will uh, come back and explain how can we use HexGeoRAS for our purpose. How can? Uh, however, I, I think uh, Hecrest is the most suitable for this task. Uh, I will go to the GIS tools and use RAS Mapper environment for this issue. Okay, let's to wait a little bit. Okay, uh, you know uh, RAS Mapper is one of the most important parts of the newer version of Hecrest, and in the old version you don't. Uh, see this uh, environment because uh, this uh, environment is added to the HECRAS after I think the version of 5. Okay, before importing uh, our downloaded DEM, you should define uh, the coordinate system of your project in RAS Mapper. Okay, in Tools uh, menu, you should uh, select Set Projection for Project. Okay, uh, there is a need a uh, Esri projection file that uh, defines the location or the extent of your uh, 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 projects. Okay, uh, how can we create this file? Okay, don't worry. Uh, there are a uh, there are a very simple uh, way to access to PRG file. Uh, uh, you can use a special reference.org website to download the prg.prg file. Okay, uh, as I mentioned uh, in the previous uh, section, uh, we use the UTM zone uh, 39M. Therefore, in the search section, you should search exactly this uh, name. WGS is the datum of uh, our data set and UTM is the coordinate system and the location of our project. Press search. Okay, 
in this uh, page, you can see the different projection system, some for Karbala, some for Iran, some for uh, Yemen, and other parts of the world. Uh, and in this section, I will download this name. I click on, on EPSG. Okay, in the second page, you can see different coordinate system format. For example, JSON, GML, ESRI, PRG, USG, and different uh, projection uh, file format for different software and for different environments. Uh, we don't need to download all of them. You should only download the P .prg file. Okay? Uh, you should type the best coordinate system or the best projection file for your case study. Okay, in this papers, I will download that PRG file, which contains the coordinate system of that zone. Okay, just download it completely. And in Esri projection file, uh, you should go and upload the downloaded file. I will select this file with PRG. Okay, you know the coordinate system and the zone and the uh, I mean the unit, the meter and other information of the projection for 39 uh, for zone of uh, 39. Select apply and then okay. If you don't do this task, uh, you can use the uh, web imagery in your Haycrest project because when you select the projection system or I mean a specific uh, coordinate system uh, Google Earth or other online uh, maps uh, will be downloaded uh, automatically for your case study okay the next uh, or the next or second steps uh, is importing the downloaded and extracted themes Okay, select new trains and an in input train file, select plus and go to the my allo stem. You know, I converted the downloaded them to UTM. Therefore, I select my allo's UTM and you know, there are different files with, with dot .adf and you should select the file with the higher volume. Okay, I select dot .adf with the higher volume. However, you can use .tif, .flt and .adf format into Haycrest. I select open and you know the model automatically create a folder with the name of train and the output name is train.hdf. You know Haycrest uh, use these uh, tools in order to decrease the volume of uh, imported dims. You know, in uh, large or uh, in large uh, rivers, the uh, volume of a river maybe is about uh, 50, uh, 500 uh, megabytes or one gigabyte, and handling this uh, volume of them uh, for Hikras is completely hard. Therefore, they, uh, uh, they provided or developed a tool for compressing the volume of your DEM and convert it to that HDF, I mean high density file. For example, if your uh, imported DEM uh, has a uh, 100 uh, megabyte volume, uh, these tools uh, can decrease the volume into about uh, maybe 10 megabytes or uh, 20 megabytes, which is completely uh, suitable for Haycrest. Okay, I will uh, press on create button and after a little bit second, the dem is uh, uploaded or imported to the Haycrest. You know, the model is imported the ADF dem and converted to HDF. Okay, you know, your dem uh, from the upper to the down is uh, this is the end of the 
rivers and downstream and this is the upper stream of our case study okay we imported uh, the dam into Hecras and the next step is to create a stream center line and banks and other information excuse me for this connection of my mouse okay in order to start uh, creating river, uh, river center line you should right click on geometry and select many excuse me add a new geometry okay in this section you should type a, a name for your a geometry. I will enter the my geo. Okay. And press OK. And you know uh, the my geo geometry is created in this section. You should start to manipulate or to complete the required layer. One of the most important layers you should must be you should uh, start to create is the river center line. Okay, I will check the rivers and right click on rivers icon and select edit geometry. And you know this is uh, a little bit like to editor extension in GIS environment and this pen start and using this pen you can start to create center line okay i start to digit from the downstream and through the center line you can zoom into the dem and start to digit you know this part is the center line of the river and in order to go uh, through you can right click okay this is the center line and I think the low elevation of the river however uh, after digiting uh, you can uh, modify uh, the center line in the geometry data window okay And at the end of the point, I sh you should double click and select a river name and a rich name. Okay, in the river name, I will select Sarbaz and in rich name, main rich or upper rich or uh, other uh, any related names. Okay, right click and stop editing. Okay, congratulations, you you have done it completely. The next step is to create bank line. Select bank line, check that, right click, and select edit geometry. Okay, uh, you can see easily the banks of this river, and I can start to digit from the bank. Okay, this part I think is the best location for. Okay, let me to click faster and then double click at the end of the digit point and come back to the upper stream and start to uh, create the uh, right bank. You know the flow uh, is flowing from the upstream to the downstream, and this area is the uh, left uh, left bank, and this area is the right bank, and this is the main channel. Okay, we should create and digit the right bank using them. Okay, don't worry about a rough digiting. You can completely edit the location of banks in the geometry window. Okay. 
I don't want to increase the time of this video and try to use it fastly. Okay, this layer is completely created. Okay, right click on this layer and select stop editing and select yes to save edits uh, for my gel. Okay, the third sloop is creating flow pass. I select flow pass. You know flow pass. Uh, uh, defining flow pass that means that that means uh, when flood is uh, surpassed to the uh, flood plane, uh, it defines the direction of uh, uh, flowing of a flood. Okay, we right click on this layer again and select edit geometry and start to digit flow pass. Uh, you should be uh, noted uh, when you are digiting flow pass, you don't, uh, you shouldn't cross the banks or go out of the them. You should completely digit between them and banks. Okay, I start completely parallel to the banks. It does not so important for modeling and you should only digit between bank lines and in dams. Okay, this is for left flood plane and this is for right flood plane. Okay, start to digit, come on. Okay, that's completed and right click on that and stop editing, select yes button and the third step is completed or finished. The fourth step is to creating cross section. Okay, you should select uh, cross section options in magenta color and right click on that and select edit geometry and start to create cross section from the left side to right side. Uh, okay, I start to uh, create cross section from left side to the uh, right side and don't exit uh, from the dam boundary and try to cover all flow pass banks and stream center line files. Okay. You should try to uh, digit completely perpendicular to the uh, center line. You can use uh, like, uh, you shouldn't uh, digit like this because the angle is more than 90 degree. You should uh, digit uh, to create 90 degree angle between cross section and reverse center line. For example, when I uh, digit this cross section, you can see the angle between the uh, reverse center line and cross section is about 90 meter. Try to uh, create cross section if you see uh, the river uh, have a wide uh, width and when river start to uh, decreasing, you should uh, create uh, several cross section. The more cross section, the better representation of river geometry for full inundation mapping. Okay. I start okay let me to create more cross section from left side to the right side okay it doesn't matter to create 
cross section between two cross section again. The model automatically creates reverse station for each cross section, and you don't need to go ahead press and start to uh, create reverse station. Okay, I think this is good for this river. Okay, just this. Okay, as you can see, we can easily use Hecras for uh, creation or extraction of river geometry without needing to GIS or other uh, similar environments. Okay, after finishing uh, the digit process, you, you should right click on this. Uh, layer and select stop editing. Press yes to save your project. Okay, I select save and we don't have, uh, I mean, we don't need to RAS mapper in this part. Uh, therefore, I should close this and you should go to the view geometric data window and in file menu, select open geometric data and select my geo which is created in RAS mapper. Okay, I select OK. Wow, congratulations. You can easily import your DM and cross sections into geometry data. If you don't see your train data or your DM in geometry data, you should go to the select layers to view in background and check the plot train options. You know, when I check and uncheck, you can see the dam in the background. Okay, select the river and uh, river center line and select XYZ plot. Okay, you can see a natural river with different cross section. You can go to the cross section and see the shape of cross sections, the station elevation data sets, the LOB channel, ROB, and the Manning roughness should be calculated for each uh, part of the cross section, left bank, right bank, and I mean, you don't need to uh, manually processes to complete this section. The model automatically uh, created these values. You should only compute or enter manning for uh, different parts of different parts of the uh, cross section. You can go different uh, between different cross sections. And if you see some station points need to a modification. You can just only click on jump to graphical cross section editor and using by hand and select the and uh, change the location of uh, banks and go to, uh, to other cross section. You can change the location. However, they are completely suitable. Okay, okay. Okay, we don't need to check all cross section. I think they are completely okay. Save geometry. Okay, in this uh, part, you should uh, compute or enter the uh, Manning roughness coefficient for right and left overbanks and main channel for each cross section. Okay, in this example, we should use a, a uniform a, a runoff co coefficient for all cross section. Uh, please go to the tables menu in geometric data and select Manning uh, values. Okay, you can, uh, as you know, there are 31 cross section and you should enter uh, Manning roughness coefficient for each cross section. N1 uh, is related to left bank, N2 uh, related to main channel, and N3 is related to uh, right bank. And for each cross section, you can enter a unique 
roughness coefficient. Okay, let me assume that for 14 cross section, we want to use this value for the left bank for main channel and for right bank however in the next section uh, i will explain about a suitable method for uh, calculation of runoff uh, manning roughness coefficient for a specific river uh, and i will talk about uh, that but in this section i will use we will use uh, these values for flood inundation mapping and for the rest the cross section you should use another value okay don't worry we can we should uh, estimate these values easily for each river using standards and uh, suitable methods okay Okay, when you uh, come back to the cross sections and go to the uh, LOB channel and ROB, you can see the run uh, manning roughness coefficient. Okay, let me close, select data. You can right click on this and see the profile plot. Okay, let me right click and uncheck the left and right okay uh, you know this river at the upstream is uh, has a higher slope and the downstream down slope has a lower slope okay say uh, go to the edit a steady geometry file okay in this example i want to check the water surface profile and other uh, hydraulic properties for different uh, for three uh, discharge values okay enter three number and apply data and you can change the name of the peak flood to better representation in the output results section okay Q, Q with the return period of 10 with the return period of 25 and return period of 100. Okay, the value of discharge for this river is about 150, 400, and 1500. Okay, apply. And select file and save this file in the folder follow it or follow that okay you know uh, the next step is to define the boundary uh, conditions value select reach boundary conditions and you know for upstream and downstream you should select suitable uh, boundary condition uh, you know there are uh, four different boundary condition types but you know in most uh, natural rivers we don't have uh, enough observed data set for running Haycrest especially rating curve or a non water surface uh, that based on uh, observed water surface and observed discharge value therefore we should use normal depths for boundary condition uh, for both upstream and downstream I select normal depths. You know, normal depths is not the depths. It's the S loop that leads to normal depths. In this uh, boundary condition, the model assumes that uh, there are uniform flow and the water surface slope and the bed slope is uh, completely or almost equals. Okay, therefore we need to enter the bed slope. Okay, let me to come back to main window and view select view profile and press uh, control in your keyboard and start to digit for 
about three or four cross section. I select the start and the end, click and leave the control. And after uh, leaving the control button, you can see this figure. In this uh, figure, you can uh, use dy per dx for bed slope. Okay, uh, I should copy this value. Go to the boundary condition and in the upstream, select normal depth and enter this value for boundary condition. Okay, and go back to the uh, downstream. However, in this uh, area, we don't uh, have uh, opposite uh, profile, and therefore you should select a higher elevation and connect to the uh, end of the rivers. Click and leave the con uh, control button. Okay, you know uh, the uh, downstream of uh, river uh, in this case have a smaller uh, a sloop and I click right click and select copy go to the boundary condition and in downstream select normal depth and enter this low sloop value for upstream this is value and for downstream is the lower sloop however you should be noted that when you uh, want to define the value of uh, this S loop, you should select only a three or four uh, cross section of the upstream and downstream. Okay? In the file and select follow data, and you can run the model. Before uh, running the model, uh, it should be noted that uh, in this course, uh, uh, I've tried uh, to represent the newest uh, method uh, for estimation of uh, flood discharge for different uh, return periods. And in the next uh, part of this uh, valuable course, uh, I will you will learn how can you use the raw data set raw. I mean. Uh, flow discharge in hydrometric station and converted that to uh, flood discharge with different return periods. Uh, we will use a flood frequency analysis to calculate the value of different flows with different uh, return period. You know, in flood inundation mapping and flood protection, flood protection study, you don't need a, you don't need uh, specific discharge with different with a specific uh, return per period. For example, in most uh, river uh, engineering projects, we use uh, uh, discharge with different uh, with return period of 50 or 100 or uh, 25 years uh, for uh, modeling. Okay, don't worry. Uh, we will investigate how can we calculate the the value of these written periods. Okay, the model is completely ready to run. Okay, in the run menu, I select a steady flow analysis, save plan, allows, okay. and in the ID, you should select allows. Okay, check the mix to model, select uh, automatically the supercritical or subcritical conditions through the rivers, select the boundary mapping in order to flood inundation mapping. And in the plan description, you can use uh, simple text for your projects. Okay, compute, press the compute button and wait to running the model. Okay, model is start to running successfully and start to storing the results. Okay, after uh, 
17 seconds, the model is run. Okay, you, you can go to the RAS mapper and uh, see the floodplain extends and other related hydraulic parameters. And also, you can use this window for flood hydraulic properties. Okay, you can select line and symbols and change the color and the line settings. For example, I select these weeds and this line, magenta, without any symbol, and uh, water surface of uh, Q100, maybe green, without any symbol, and therefore ground bed slope. Okay, you can see a beautiful cross section or water surface through the river for different uh, full, with different uh, return periods. As I mentioned before, you can uh, go to the file and select uh, copy to clipboard and go and go to the Word or Office environment and paste in that uh, area or copy to clipboard and, for example, select a paint or other related environment for pictures. And save the output as uh, pictures. Okay, select paste and save the button and select the name profiles. Save. Also, you can uh, convert or export this uh, output to AutoCAD environments as DXF or DWG file format. Okay, for example, in the cross-sectional view, you can use and see the water surface profile, right-click and select zoom, and go deeply to the picture. Okay. In this picture, you can right click and select line and symbol and change the line width, symbol, and other related settings. Okay, like this. Also, in file menu, you can copy to clipboard or print multiple, uh, write a DXF file and open these files your, or this output in AutoCAD environments. Okay, let me just stop this video in this part and in the next part uh, we should uh, investigate or sh we will show you the difference output of uh, HECRAS uh, hydraulic properties. Okay.